Today is the 29th day of October and I'm going to call this things that keep happening to me in life connected to October 29th day. Most of you just know it as October 29th so I'll call it that, that'll do. Now today as you may not know Winona Ryder's birthday. I've always liked Winona Ryder. Something about dark hair, that elfin face and the eyes with character and this has nothing to do with my tale for today. I just thought I'd get Winona Ryder in there. Hmm. Sorry, sorry, on with the presentation. Now, the first time that this day entered into my personal life was in 1990. I was working in London, and I had a relationship, short but sweet, with an Australian tourist named Mary. She told me her birthday, it's 29th of October, and it hardly constitutes a major event in the great scheme of things, because we all have to have a birthday. But it becomes important in the great scheme of things, as far as my life goes, once you get into the embittered first marriage section of my story, which is the bit right now. A year later, I lost contact with Mary and I met Heidi, the future Mrs. Seabrook number one. Now, it's a marriage that ended a few years later after it became apparent that she was still dating. Life gets weird if you spend it with a woman that won't let her marriage stand in the way of double dipping her old boyfriend. But I digress. We separated in 1996 prior to our 1997 divorce. Now, during that separation in the autumn of 96, the Aussie came back on the scene after six years of living her life in Western Australia. And she called me. We met and proceeded to have a very good time for the next three months. Now, her birthday, her 27th birthday in 96, you know the date, passed for her in rainy London before the prospect of December in the sun called her back down under. Now, that meant that I had two relationships with people that share the same birthday. Chances of that happening, one in 365, more if you count leap years. But we went our separate ways. The relationship was a good one, and it made me wonder what it would be like to travel a bit further afield. I'd been to a few places in Europe, but never really braved the hassle of seeing the world, and that had changed, obviously. So I booked myself a little trip with my share of the profits from selling the house from the divorce. Hong Kong, Kowloon, and a bit of China, Sydney. To track down family, I managed to find one of two uncles, Western Australia, with a hire car. Then on to Zimbabwe to see Victoria Falls, Bulawayo and things like that. Now, it just so happened that the time period I was to spend in Western Australia included October the 29th. Okay, it didn't just happen. Obvious gesture. Not too hard to see that. I also posted a few bits about myself on a pen pal website, hoping that someone in the places I was visiting would offer to be a tour guide for the price of a few beers. Nobody did, but that posting will become integral in about a minute. I made it as far as the outback in Australia in November. The safari, the waterfall, the rafting expeditions and everything else in Zimbabwe, I never got to them. Four days after October the 29th, the hire car I was driving skidded off the road between Wave Rock and Perth and I suffered compression of the vertebrae, bruising on my back that ached for three months and minor glass lacerations on my right arm and leg that looked like I was scratched by a cat. Those little scars are still there today. It was bright, it was sunny, it was great, the road was fine, I was going around a corner on a dusty road, don't recall heading for the ditch, and the next thing I know, an hour of my life has gone by. Either the impact erased my short-term memory, or I fell asleep at the wheel for a moment, or I was distracted. I guess I will never know. So I flew back via Singapore on a mixture of Valium and Bailey's Irish Cream, and I was off work for nearly two months, but it was a union job, so I got full pay for recovering and doing things on the PC. And if you remember, I posted my details on a pen pal website. I checked the details and I'd got a lot of answers. Now, there were a few from genuinely interesting people, but those emails eventually died a typical email death. Uh, there was also one from Beth in the US. We started talking. Infrequent emails became frequent emails. She called, I called her. We were sending emails every day that grew and grew and grew, and eventually we decided that we were going to meet. And a friend and I had planned to visit Florida for a few weeks, and I took a third week off, and I decided to meet her in New York City, JFK Airport, Terminal 7. The New York Yankees had just swept the Atlanta Braves in the best of seven World Series baseball games and the city that never sleeps was in a party mood. It was a Friday. It was 1999. You know what day it was. October 29th. And the reason I'm doing this is it's now the 10th anniversary of that meeting. Beth and I have been married for seven years. It seems that October the 29th is the same wherever I may be in the world. It's a day when things just keep happening to me, and I'm pretty glad that they do. So if this day just happens to be a special day for you too, then enjoy it. And uh, if it becomes special for you, don't say I didn't warn you. So there we are. Nearly two decades, 18 time zones, and one hell of a story. Have a good one.